Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's quite difficult for me to continue uh, today's morning after such an interesting uh, presentation made by Tracy, and the skills are perfect. So I try to do my best, but I know that uh, I will not be winner. So <laughs> please accept it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please accept it at the beginning from uh, from this point of view. Uh, as uh, Dr. Fortin has said, I'm uh, representing the Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports of the Czech Republic, but today I represent also the Council of Europe and the Steering Committee for Educational Policy and Practice, which is the steering body dealing with uh, educational affairs uh, in the Council of, Europe, uh, uh, Council of Europe work. I will begin my lecture first with a few words regarding the mission of the Council of Europe in the field of education. Then I would like to present the Council of Europe consent on quality and education and finish with the presentation uh, on uh, the pan-European platform on ethics and integrity in education, which will be launched uh, this year. Uh, the Council of Europe is a continent's leading human rights organization, and you probably know it. It includes 47 member states in, in Europe, and 28 of which are members of the European Union. The Council of Europe promotes human rights, rule of, of law and democracy through international conventions, and monitors member states' progress and makes recommendations through independent experts, monitoring bodies, and other intergovernmental structures. Education is a major focus of the Council of Europe's activities because it is considered as a one of the fundamental pillars of uh, democracy. What is the mission of the Council of Europe in education? In the field of education, the Council of Europe is focusing its work in three priority areas, contributing through new education policies and practices, for the democratic renewal of our societies and institutions, for the full and meaningful participation of all citizens in political, social and economic life, and last but not least, for the respect of the increasing diversity in Europe. I think all of these things are very closely linked to the main theme of this, of this conference, to plagiarism. The first priority is clearly linked to the role that uh, education should play for the promotion of uh, democratic uh, competencies, very important role. As our societies become more complex, competencies for democracy and intercultural dialogue will be more than ever a prerequisite of participation on political and social life, but also in economic life. In addition to specific and technical competencies in a large number of academic disciplines, we will also need transversal competencies that enable us to be full partic participants of societies. This priority is part of the four main objectives of education defined by the Council of Europe. Let me present them. First is a preparation for work. Secondly, preparation for democratic citizenship. Third, personal development. And fourth, development of a broad, advanced knowledge base. The two other priorities of our program, program of the Council of Europe, are very much linked to the definition that the Council has given to quality in education. For the Council of Europe, is a quality education is by definition inclusive and offers every learner equal opportunities for success, but also enable him or her to take control over his or her life gives the individual the power to influence decisions, to participate actively, and to improve the democratic life. As you may understand, this is the result of a certain shift that has taken place in the Council of Europe with regard to the consideration of the fundamental right to education, which does not mean anymore a right to access any kind of education, but an education where learners are put in a position to access and complete quality education programs with success. Let me present you one of the very important outcomes of the Council of Europe work in the last, uh, last decade, last years, which is a recommendation of quality education, which is a very useful document 
And as far as we know, it is also one of the uh, important documents used in uh, member states of the Council of Europe nowadays. The issue of quality education will be central to our future work, and the starting point for that was adoption in December 2012 by the Committee of Ministers, recommendation on ensuring quality education. This policy text might be seen as an innovative text for several respects. The recommendation gives a comprehensive and common understanding through nine major elements of what should be considered, at least in the European context, as quality education. This recommendation also puts forward an understanding of quality education linked to its role in preparing not only for employment, which was, uh, frankly speaking, more or less one of the headlines for uh, typical for last uh, six, seven years due to the economic crisis in the world, in the Europe, I think that we have to keep that it is necessary, important to know that the education is not only for labor market, education has different roles in education as such. So, the quality education linked to its role in preparing is not only for employment, which is the purpose dominating public debate, but also for life as active citizens in democratic societies, personal development and development and maintenance of a broad, advanced knowledge base. All these purposes are equally important in reinforce each other. Thirdly, this recommendation links the consideration of quality and education to the education systems as a whole, as well as to individual institutions. In particular, it emphasized that the quality of an education system must include its ability to improve adequate opportunities for all learners, which encompasses access to the educational system as well as the enjoyment of conditions of teaching and learning, which reasonably enables pupils and students to successfully complete the education program in which they are enrolled. This is a particular important for students who came from Disadvantage, disadvantage groups. Fourthly, the recommendation focuses on the roles and responsibilities of public authorities and nuances these in relations, in relations to the kind and level of education provided. Quality education is ensured differently in compulsory and in non-compulsory education, and it is ensured differently in kindergarten than in higher education or private or in lifelong learning. Some groups, vulnerable and persons deprived of liberty, liberty will need special attention and special measures to have a quality education offer adapted to their needs but quality education must be ensured for all. I would like to underline this last uh, few words. There are different ways in different countries and uh, at different levels to deal with it, definitely. But the responsibility, responsibility of public authorities always remain the same. This is one of the missions, one of the key messages uh, sent from uh, the Council of Europe to all member states. Public authorities are relevant bodies and responsible for, for that. The last aspect I would like to underline is uh, the requirement for public authorities to develop specific policies and measures to combat corruption in education. And in this respect, I'm closely very linked to, to the plagiarism and to that what, uh, what the uh, conference will, uh, will deal with. Corruption in education constitutes a violation of the basic principle of equal rights. The effect of corruption in education is to favor those who are able and willing to pay for favors and at the expense of those who do not. Access to education is then not based on merit or on needs and qualifications earned through education are not based on achievement. 
the extent of corruption in education varies from country to country and with the kind of education. In particular, access to and qualifications from higher education seem to be areas in which corruption is the most widespread. Nevertheless, corruption is a real or potential in issue in all countries and for all kinds and levels of education. The adoption of this recommendation on ensuring a quality education is for us the beginning of a long and challenging process of implementation in member states. And we are committed and have the duty to assist them in this task. It is important that there is a very strong political decision on this issue among member states. And let me mention the policy recommendation which has been discussed during uh, the last ministerial educational ministers conference in Helsinki 2013. And ministers asked the Council of Europe to do something in this respect and ask to establish a pan-European platform of exchange and information and best practices on ethics and integrity in education with special attention to the fight against corruption in higher education. And frankly speaking, because I also participated in this conference, it was not so easy to find agreement on that. Then ministers also uh, decided to develop descriptors of competencies for democratic culture and interculture dialogue in all possible levels of education as a very important prerequisite and a framework document on ethical principles of the teaching profession that could lead to the, to the development of codes of conduct in member states. This is a very clear political mandate given to member states and given to, uh, to the Council of Europe for its uh, future steps. And now allow me to provide you with uh, last uh, uh, information about uh, in my lecture, which is uh, closely linked to that what I what I have mentioned at the beginning of my lecture. It is um, one of the first presentations on uh, on a pan-European platform on ethics, transparency, and integrity in education, which will be launched this year in uh, Europe, especially in, in member states. Allow me now to present um, also proposed activities for this ATINET, as we call the ATINET platform for years 16, 17. Now, a few words about uh, this platform. This proposal come uh, from um, the working group, which was established to progress the setting up of the platform. The working group is composed of uh, representatives of the steering committee for educational policies and practice of the Council of Europe, and including observers representing students and teachers' organizations, and also experts in this field coming, definitely coming from uh, universities in in, in Europe, we invited Tom Hamilton and Ian Smith from Scotland as a, yeah, I think, very good and I think uh, one of the leading experts in, in, this, in this field in, in, in Europe. The background in reference documents for the Atinet platform are the legal instruments developed by the Council of Europe and the monitoring work, the recommendation on quality education I've presented before, and the final Helsinki Ministerial Declaration, I also provided you with clear mandate from that conference. The fight against all forms of corruption is also one of the top priorities of the Secretary General of the Council of Europe, and he also mentioned it uh, in, in the last report um, presented uh, two, 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 three weeks ago. Since the Helsinki Ministerial Conference, several discussions have taken place on creation of non-platform to define the concept and philosophy of the project and to receive feedback and input from member states about their views, needs and expectations about it. 
We have also distributed one year ago the questionnaire um, but that was sent uh, to national delegations uh, as a particular instrument in this respect and helped to shape the main concepts of the feasibility study on the platform, which is now presented, which was adopted by the Council of Europe and which is available on the Council of Europe webpage. And if you are interested, I can send you a link and you can distribute it then to, uh, to participants of, of, this of this international conference. What is the main concept of this platform? The main concept uh, is mandate a positive approach to ethics, transparency and integrity. We want to promote a bottom-up approach based on the promotion of ethical principles rather than to develop top-down regulatory anti-corruption uh, measures. Based on these principles, based on approach, what should be the main task of the platform. Let me present um, uh, some of the uh, uh, based principles. To share information and best practices, to disseminate policy opinions and publications, to contribute to capacity building at in institutional level through peer learning and sharing of best practices, to raise awareness on issues linked with the platform, to support the establishment of national and regional pilot projects on ethics, transparency and integrity in education, and to exchange information on current examples, to develop a pool of expertise, and last but not least, to set up a web platform with a community of practice. To, to achieve these overall aims, the working group has identified four priorities for action. For, first, work on the ethical behavior of all actors in education. Then, ac academic integrity and plagiarism. The issue of recognition and of qualifications and uh, the contribution to the global action against uh, corruption. For the priority uh, number one, work on ethical behavior of all actors in education, one of the activities could be the drafting of a state of play of the situation in Europe concerning the use of codes of conduct for teachers. The study would first be on the codes for teachers and then on other actors in education. It is hoped that through the study and specific guidelines could be drafted for different groups according to the identified needs. In second step, the development of the project could also see the drafting of the Council of Europe Charter on Ethics, to which institutions or organizations could commit to ensign or the drafting of a Council of Europe recommendation on the public responsibility of actors in education in order to achieve ethics, transparency and integrity in education. Second priority for action, academic integrity and, and plagiarism. This area is uh, more devoid, devoted to higher education. It is proposed to have a study comparing the policies for academic integrity in higher education across the 50 state parties to the European Culture Convention, study which would analyze the policies and practices used and propose guidelines and examples of best practices. Another activity would be organization of a seminar of on plagiarism in year 2016. I think that outcomes from that in international conference, your experience, results for, from the, uh, from the European project uh, you, are, uh, you are developing could be also, I think, one of the important inputs to, to, this, uh, to this seminar. Third priority for action, the recognition of qualifications, which touches upon the problems of accreditation and, and diploma mills. On these issues, the project would work in close cooperation with the ANIC NARIC networks, the European Association of, for Quality Assurance in Higher Education, and European Quality Assurance Register for Higher Educational Institution. In addition to concrete tools, such as checklists or databases that could be consulted by students, the project could draft policy recommendations for governments according to the identify needs. And finally, the fourth priority for action 
which is the contribution to the global action against uh, corruption, would be the establishment of partnerships and development of collaboration which are with other organizations or institutions working in the field, such as the International Institute for Educational Planning, Transparency International, or U4 Anti-Corruption Resource Center. These are the main plans, main goals of the Council of Europe in launching process of the Pan-European Platform on Ethics and Integrity in Education, which is one of the flagship initiatives of the Council of Europe in this field, in the field of education as, as such. We see it as a very uh, relevant mission and we see it as a very important step in uh, building of uh, space for a very open communication and cooperation in the field of education, where transparency and ethics and integrity plays a very, very important uh, role. For me, as a representative of the, uh, of the Czech Minister of Education, it's a great pleasure not to be not only to be active or to be a part of this um, uh, preparatory process, but also to say that uh, this platform will be launched uh, at the beginning of October this year in Prague during the seventh Prague Forum or edu on educational policies of the Council of Europe, which is more or less uh, very well uh, known uh, meeting of experts on educational policies in Europe, and this tradition is, uh, is running uh, more, than, more than 20 years in, in Europe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, friends, uh, that's all what I've prepared for, uh, for today and for my, uh, for my lecture. First, uh, thank you very much for your attention. It was very, very nice to, to, to present uh, such uh, views of the Council of Europe on in the framework of this uh, international conference where, as far as I am informed, uh, there are representatives uh, representing four uh, continents of the world. Four? Is it? Four? Five. 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 Oh, amazing. So, uh, and, and, and let me at the end uh, congratulate to, to Dr. Fortinek to first his excellent work. Uh, thanks uh, to, to Mendel University in Brno for uh, organizing this uh, international conference and also representing the, the Czech Republic uh, in, in, this, in this field. And uh, thank you very much for coming and thank you for your attention. <laughs>